and in the middle. We'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, I'm going to call this meeting to order of the Sacramento Public Library Authority um, on April 22nd, 2021 at uh, 3.02 p.m. If the clerk could please call uh, the roll to establish a quorum. Angelique Ashby. Here. Bobby Singh Allen. Here. Don Natoli. Don Natoli. Eric Guetta. Here. Garrett Gatewood. Here. Kevin Spees. Here. My Vang. Here. Patrick Kennedy. Here. Bill Serna. Here. Rich Desmond. Rick Jennings. Here. Sean Lolowy. Here. Sue Frost. Tim Schaefer. Here. Saul Hernandez. Here. That's a quorum. Now read the statement. This meeting of the Sacramento Public Library Authority is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T Universe cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.sacccounty.net. Today's meeting will be repeated Saturday, April 20 at 4 p.m. on channel 14 and can also be viewed on Metro Cable 14's YouTube channel. The meeting will also be recorded via Zoom. A DVD copy will be available no later than two weeks following today's meeting. The full agenda, including reports, is available on the library website at www.saclibrary.org. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should raise their hand in the Zoom program. Please speak clearly when addressing the board and state your name for the record. Comments are limited to three minutes so that everyone may be heard. Please also note that participation in this teleconference via telephone rather than through the Zoom app may result in your telephone number being visible to the public during the live broadcast and later telecast of this meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, if we could all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. All right. Sue Frost is now in attendance. Welcome, uh, welcome, Sue, Supervisor Frost. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, go on to item number two, public comments on matters not on the agenda. Madam Clerk, do we have anybody signed up to speak? Um, I see no hands. So, uh, I see Mr. Payton Martin from Local 39, I think, has uh, raised your hand. Good afternoon. I just wanted to uh, attend today. I wanted to introduce myself since I'm the representative for Local 39 and the library unit. Um, I also wanted to thank you guys for the last uh, board meeting for recognizing the contributions made by staff and I look forward to uh, productive negotiations. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Appreciate that and appreciate all the good work of Local 39. And the, any other members of the public signed up to speak? Um, Madam Clerk, I don't see any. Nope. And then I, we will go ahead and move on to item number three, presentations. I think our first item is Madam Clerk. Friends of the Sacramento Public Library, Karen Wilson. You're muted, Karen. Not anymore, hello. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. 
Um, I am pumped up right now because I just came from a classroom visit at James McKee School in the Elk Grove School District uh, to uh, do a virtual classroom visit for the Book First program. And I can't tell you how great those kids and their teachers and the library youth services uh, the librarians are keeping those kids engaged, even when they're upside down, sometimes hanging off their beds, but they're paying attention, they're raising their hands, uh, is so great and motivating for the friends who have a chance to do these visits. And they're happening throughout the library system right now. And one day soon, we hope to catch up with them in the library in person too. So we raise funds for Book First program on the big day of giving. And we're so excited to tell you today that we just received notification that Delta Dental has awarded $15,000 to Book First uh, as the lead sponsor for the 2021 school year for Book First with their support to be used as a challenge grant to uh, encourage others to match that on the big day of giving, which is May 6th. So thank you, Delta Dental. Um, we're hopeful that we can reach our goal of $55,000 for next year's first graders in high need schools. And that starts today, this early online giving opened up today for the big day of giving. Though, of course, we'd like to issue a gentle challenge to our wonderful JPA board members to help us meet that challenge grant. And we also wish the hundreds of nonprofits who are participating in big day uh, a successful campaign. I'd like to show you now a video that our great Sacramento Public Library staff have put together to highlight the book first program for the big day. And a special thanks today to Donna Zick, uh, Lisa Martinez, and Brian Strand, who've done a wonderful work on the campaign. So now we're going to see this beautiful look at the joys of kids and books. Thank you, Karen. Sorry, I've seen this a bunch of times. <laughs> Very nice video. Thank you. Karen. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any questions for Karen Wilson before we move on? I don't see any hand raised, so we'll move on to uh, the Sacramento Public Library volunteer recognition. Okay. So Kathy's going to pop uh, uh, an image up. The book first, the gift that keeps on giving. Um, these beautiful young women are Tiffany and Jennifer Chan, who volunteer, who are uh, volunteers at our South Natomas Library, um, getting ready to do school, I guess, help with the school visits that happen from that library. The librarian there is Marion Simmons, and they're getting ready for school visits. I want to. Um, turn the meeting over now to Megan Casey. Megan is a youth services librarian here at Sacramento Public Library and she works a lot with our teen volunteers and she brought with her Aoife Zuckerman. Aoife is a teen volunteer who's been key in the virtual homework zones that the library has to offer. Uh, please join me in welcoming Megan and Aoife. Good afternoon, Megan and Eva. Hello, thank you. Um, I just wanted to give a brief overview of uh, what we've been doing in the Homework Zone program, uh, which has been going now for over six months. So uh, the program, in case you don't know, uh, is uh, where trained high school aged volunteers partner one on one with kindergarten students uh, through eighth grade students to work on homework assignments or study assignments. The program has actually been in place at SPL for many years, but as with so many things, uh, 2020 offered us a challenge to find new ways to reach and serve our communities. Um, so in 2020, uh, in July, actually some former volunteers uh, approached their librarians and advocated for starting Homework Zone online. They 
recognized the community's need for extra homework support. And especially uh, during the pandemic and distance learning, they felt that we really needed to meet that need. So by September, 2020, we already had coaches trained, we had staff trained, and we began offering virtual homework zone on Wednesdays. Took a while for word to spread, but eventually we began to have a full match of students to coaches, a one-to-one -one match, and many students are returning every week. So after six months, we decided that we could actually expand. Uh, we recruited and trained more volunteer co coaches. We trained more staff. And by late March, we had launched uh, a Thursday homework zone. We continue to have great attendance numbers. As of yesterday, we have 248 visits uh, serving 140 unique students. Roughly 80% of our students are repeat visitors, which I think really says a lot about the quality of service that our teen coaches are giving. Uh, they work mostly on math and English, but we also cover science and social science pretty regularly. We have 30 volunteer coaches with the homework zone. Together, they have logged, as of yesterday, over 600 volunteer hours. Uh, coaches come from neighborhoods and high schools all over the county, south to north, all the way from the river to Folsom. And they bring with them such a variety of experiences and interests. Some of them are into arts and crafts and baking. Some of them are doing science and math extracurriculars. And we even have some people who are inter interested in law. Um, many coaches, I think, began volunteering just out of a simple desire to help their community and earn volunteer hours but they've really come to enjoy the experience for what it is. The coaches report a strong sense of civic engagement, accomplishment, and personal growth from volunteering with the program. I've seen Homework Zone go from in-person, which sometimes can be busy and sometimes is not that busy, to online, where it has been very robust. Each of our volunteers commits a lot more than just time with this service. They offer a personal connection for a child a chance to see and be seen, and they're always expanding ways in which they and their students understand how to learn. Uh, personally, Homework Zone is my favorite part of every week. I get to connect with team volunteers, offer them support, and also um, I get to interact with families and children in a really meaningful way. Um, our coach who's here today, Eva Zuck Zuckerman, was one of the original teens who advocated for the program. So I'm very proud of her. Um, she previously was a volunteer at Art Demick Library. She is warmly appreciated by her students. They always seem to grow and they really enjoy their sessions with her. Additionally, I think that um, as a person, her warmth, humor and insight and her sense of leadership in the Homework Zone team of volunteers has been super pivotal to the success of our program. In terms of both how well we work with students and also how close the team of volunteers has become, Aoife has become a real leader, helping to form a network of peer support and a sense of camaraderie for the teens, who I think we're also serving with this program, not just the students. So Aoife has actually been kind enough to agree to read this proclamation celebrating Sacramento Public Library volunteers. So at this point, I'm gonna pass it over to Aoife. Thank you so much, Megan. I'm just gonna read this volunteer proclamation. A proclamation recognizing Sacramento Public Library Authority volunteers for National Volunteer Week. Whereas National Volunteer Week will be celebrated in public libraries all throughout the country and Sacramento County, and all of the cities and communities therein from April 18th, 2021 to April 24th. And whereas in 2020, during this unprecedented year of closures and limited service due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Sacramento Public Library volunteers were able to provide a total of 30,255 hours of service in libraries. Examples of the volunteer service provided include adult and teen volunteers providing 12,890 hours in support of library operations, adult literacy volunteers providing 70 hours of tutoring for adults wanting to improve their education levels, ballot box monitors providing 4,464 hours to ensure the safety and validity of 2020's presidential election, and 12,831 friends volunteer hours providing assistance 
in shelving, pulling holds, selling books at local branches and at the Friends of the Library Book Den sales and presenting and distributing books to Sacramento County's first graders. The volunteer support at $29.95 an hour equates to more than $906,000 in support or the equivalent of 14.5 full-time employees. And whereas volunteers show their commitment to service to the community by homework, coaching, English conversation groups, adult literacy tutoring, design instruction, data entry, shelf reading, book sorting, book selling, computer training, advocacy, and outreach. And whereas volunteers are passionate about, Sacramento, about the Sacramento Public Library and the communities it serves. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Sacramento Public Library Board does hereby proclaim April 18th through April 24th as Volunteer Week and thanks the 1,091 volunteers who support and enhance our libraries. Thank you very much. That is great. 30,225 hours and over 1,091 volunteers. So great. Uh, thank you to all the volunteers and, and uh, love celebrating National Volunteers Week here. Thank okay. you so much. Yes. No, thank you. Rivka, is there anything else on that uh, presentation? Uh, no, I think that that ends it. I just want to, I personally would like to thank Aoife for her advocacy. Megan, beautiful job, and it doesn't happen without this amazing partnership between staff and uh, and the volunteers. And think about it, 14 and a half full-time equivalent positions in a year of COVID, in a year when we could hardly get together. It's overwhelmingly wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you to all the volunteers here. Okay, well, uh, 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 go on to our next item here, executive team report, uh, Rivka. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I, I wanna re refer the board to the written report that we've prepared for you, but highlight a couple of things. And that includes that the RFP for the library director search will be hitting the street. We hope tomorrow afternoon, we're putting the finishing touches on it. Jen is, uh, uh, reviewing or putting together a, a contract template. Um, I have one more document that I owe her for it. So that will be happening. I want to mention how proud I am that we are being recognized as the early learning experts. And the reason I say this is that Sacramento County Office of Education reached out to our early learning and development manager, Donna Zick, and we will provide, be providing a series of workshops to SCOE um, in order to expand virtual learning and dual language, work, uh, dual language opportunities for parents and childcare providers. And I'm really excited. It's, it's been a long haul here at the library to make sure that our education partners understand the expertise that we have. And that is in that zero to five um, area. And I'm so proud of Donna. I'm so proud of the work that Christy Ham has done uh, with the youth services team in setting the stage for all of this. And, and this to me makes it very, very real and tangible. I want to mention that uh, we've been in discussions with the Frank or with the Elk Grove School District. And um, those of you who are more familiar with Elk Grove know how much the school district has grown in the 24 years since we entered into our agreement. And it's really time for us to think about alternative locations for the library so that the school district can better serve their students. It will be a long process. Nobody will be displaced until we have, uh, we have an answer. We look forward uh, to Mayor Singh Allen and Council Member Spees and the city of Elk Grove giving us a hand with all of this to make it work. I wanna mention also that um, we're looking forward to better serving our public thanks to a $75,000 grant for Chromebooks that we just received. Uh, other than that, please read the report. If there are other items that you have questions about, such as anonymous feedback or um, some grant applications that we've proposed to the city, please ask us. 
If not, I'm going to turn this over to Deputy Director Kathy Crosswaite and Community Engagement Manager Morgan Pershing to talk about mobile services. Yet one more thing we do to touch the community where they need to be reached. Well, th thank you, Rivka. I wanted to say thank you for all of the work on early learning. Uh, I think we've got a question here or a comment, a uh, hand raised by board member Ashby. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to uh, do a shout out to your alternate board member from um, Supervisor Cerna's alternate, Trustee Karina Talamantes, my chief of staff, but she um, may have been instrumental in making sure that the Sacramento County Office of Education included the Sacramento Public Library Authority in those early education seminars. And she, it's, a, it's a fact she's very proud of. I know she's not on this call today, but I know if she were, she would be telling you all how proud she is of you and uh, how excited she was to champion the library at SCOE and she will continue to do so. She's thrilled to be a person to bridge that relationship. It's well earned on your end. And I'm glad you have an advocate both on this board and that board because uh, your services in the early childhood education areas are second to none in the region. And it is great to see you being acknowledged as such. So congratulations to all of you. And thank you to Karina for her help. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no other questions, I wanted to mention one more thing. And that is the month of May is a very special month for us at Sacramento Public Library. We are dedicating uh, the whole month uh, to programming to celebrate Amber Clark, our librarian who was so tragically killed. Um, and one of the high points of the month is a program sponsored by the Friends of Sacramento Public Library. It's a visit from Temple Grandin. Those of you who have HBO might remember a movie with Claire Danes where she plays Temple Grandin. We're really excited uh, to bring such a high quality speaker uh, to shed light on autism and to share this with the community. So I wanted to mention that as well. And if there are no other questions, Kathy, Morgan, over to you. All right, thank you, Rivka. I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, hopefully everyone can see that. And yes. I wanted to uh, thank you all for the opportunity uh, to talk about Sacramento Public Library's mobile services. Um, I am Kathy Crossweight, the Deputy Director here at the Sacramento Public Library. And this is, uh, has become one of my favorite topics. So thank you again. Um, the library's history of going outside the brick and mortar buildings to bring library services to more communities dates back to 1948. And with the help of our Sacramento Room archives, this presentation will take you through a bit of history and bring you up to speed with our current efforts around mobile services. For over 70 years, Sacramento public librarians and staff have understood the importance of getting outside of the brick and mortar and serving people where they are. Mobile services successfully brings those of the library services to people that can't easily get to our buildings. And mobile services also does more than that and that it creates trust with the community and the public library for many who don't even know what a public library does or that they have access to that. But also mobile services does our basics of deliver books, programs, and so much more. So in the late 1940s, the city of Sacramento was growing and spreading, serving the rise of three military facilities, an aerospace presence in Aerojet, and an increasing state government bureaucracy. Since it was almost impossible to provide adequate library service to all the various locations, the city librarian came up with the idea of a library on wheels. So you'll see that in 1948, the traveling branch was purchased for $5,000 and it was just a, a war surplus trailer that was hauled around by this car. And over 2000 books were available for adults and children, but since most of the stops were nearby schools, the collection really was more towards students than, um, than adults. And this was ultimately retired in 1963. 
1954, the city librarian added another bookmobile. It was purchased from the Gersten Slogger Company, whose stock trade was the dedicated design and construction of bookmobiles. It was dubbed the Traveling Branch, and its schedule was 13 school stops and three community stops. And this was ultimately retired in 1967. So in 1963, the city library purchased two mobile library trailers that were pulled by trucks and offered a 4,000 book capacity. So one branch was called the bookmobile and the other was called the mobile library and they were $7,000 each. So the mobile library, from what I could find, um, it was the only service I could find, but uh, they served the Florin Road and Southland Park Drive areas. And again, mostly catered to schools with only a, a couple of community stops. And these were ultimately retired in 1976. And just from the looks of them, it was probably quite an effort to get them out to their stop. So then we cruise into the 1970s. So in circa 1975, the Wanderer Bookmobile started providing services to areas in the county not previously served. At this same time, there were two other mobile branches making multiple stops each week, the Pioneer and the Traveling Branch. And you'll notice the Pioneer definitely has a, a pioneering theme here, and it was wrapped specifically for the Bicentennial, and it was supplied with films, a projection projector, videotape, phonograph, and audio cassette players, along with books relating to American history. And it was known as the media vehicle. And it made the rounds during that year, but then it was taken out and rewrapped and made part of the regular mobile service team. And then you can see that the traveling branch in 1979 replaced the previous traveling branch. So now we're going to fast forward to the turn of the century. And in 1998, two diesel wagons were purchased. So again, we have the Wanderer, that name seems to have followed, and then the introduction of the Wonder Wagon. Each vehicle cost $228,390 upon delivery, and both remain on the road today, making well over 50 stops each month. So the Wanderer continues serving its stops while increasing its availability to bring service to senior housing throughout the area. Even today, it is a highlight for many who eagerly look forward to their library rolling in to deliver books. Now, the Wonder Wagon had a slightly different objective as it was designed to encourage those who had never been to the library to make use of library services. Inside this remodeled recreational vehicle were computers with educational software, puppet shows, and storytelling, along with a selection of about 2,500 books. So although the average life of a bookmobile is 12 to 14 years, Sacramento Public Library has been able to provide service to many communities beyond this average. By 2013, it was clear that more needed to be done to enhance our efforts. So through the Raising Readers First Five grant in 2014, the Wonder Wagon, which had become the backup vehicle when the Wanderer was in the shop, was put onto a regular schedule focusing on working with young families and assisted living complexes to bringing services and introducing the library to the residents. In 2018, with a Library Services and Technology Act grant of $80,308, Vincent Van Gogh, which we refer to as Vinny, is a Ford Transit 350 van, and that helped to carry on that work with a smaller, more flexible vehicle that was easier for staff to drive and more nimble in its operation. It's used on regular stops as well as outreach efforts when needed. So in 2019, Sacramento Public Library was approached by the Air Quality Metropolitan District, or AQMD, because they had heard we were looking to replace our bookmobiles. Admittedly, staff had been talking about the need to revitalize mobile services at every opportunity possible, and evidently, word got out. 
So through the Sacramento Emergency and Clean Air Transportation Grant, or CCAT, which is administered by AQMD, the library will receive 100,000 per vehicle upon delivery of the two new all electric bookmobiles. Which brings me to this past year, 2020, when the library applied and was rewarded funds to purchase two all electric vehicles to replace the 1998 Wanderer and Wonder Wagon bookmobiles, which has served their time and are more than ready to retire. So today is Earth Day. So I think it's very appropriate that now is the time to let you know about our new purchases. So this summer, staff is excited to take receipt of two all electric bookmobiles. The library's mobile service team has been meeting with the vehicle vendor Phoenix Motor Cars and the library's consultant Aura Planning on a regular basis to ensure the design meets the needs of the community served. The library is partnering with the City of Sacramento and SMUD to ensure an electrical charging infrastructure is being developed to support these vehicles. These vehicles will continue the work of our current bookmobiles with enhanced features to deliver more interactive programming and trainings. Yes, there will definitely be a planned celebration when they are here and starting service. Library staff is very excited to take mobile services into the future. Now I'd like to introduce Morgan Pershing, our community engagement manager who directly oversees the mobile services team. <clears throat> Hello everyone. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update of, <clears throat> about mobile services in COVID times. Uh, so we restarted services in July, 2020. So COVID didn't keep us down for long, but don't worry, all of it is safe. Um, currently mobile services make 63 stops a month serving an average of 825 patrons. And stops include housing developments, senior housing, shelters, and transitional housing. Next slide, please. And things that are happening now and in the future, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, mobile services was responsible for starting the hotspot giveaway when we had over a thousand to give away from CARES Act funding to residents of the city of Sacramento. They just started a new stop at the Orangevale Community Center uh, in order to placate those who are really wanting library services as the Orangevale Library gets remodeled. And we are starting a new stop in the summer uh, at Vineyard Point, which is very exciting because there are no library services anywhere near that area. And since I got your attention, my staff made it clear to me that I had to mention that our bookmobiles do a brisk business in materials in Persian, Arabic, and Russian because they make stops at places where there are enclaves of people who speak those languages. And I would maybe go as far to say that their circulation of those materials are higher than in branch. And I also wanted to just share a small vignette from Heather Harrison, who is in charge of mobile services. She wanted me to let you know that one patron she, call, she calls every month tells her that the bookmobile service is the best thing about living at her facility. So they are, they are <laughs> the community loves them and outreach and mobile services is really where it's at because we get to go to where people are and bring them our wonderful services. So thank you. The end. That's it. <laughs> Well, that was a great presentation, and uh, I, I do appreciate, I remember as a kid, a farm worker, we had the bookmobile that would come out to the corner of uh, County Road 86 and County Road 23 to make sure that, that uh, there was uh, available books. And exciting that we're uh, on Earth Day looking at electrifying and uh, looking at clean air, making sure we're out there. So thank you for that wonderful presentation, uh, combining everything together. If I see uh, no questions from the board, uh, for the for uh, our staff here, and um, uh, so then we'll go ahead and move on to our our next item on the agenda, uh, the our information items. Any questions from the board on our information items? Great, seeing none, then we'll move on to the consent calendar. Does any member of the board wish to pull on any item from consent? 
Seeing no hands raised, I'll ask uh, a, uh, well, let me ask the clerk, is there, if there's any uh, members of the public signed up to speak on matters on that are on the consent calendar? No, I don't have anybody. Great, I'll take a, entertain a motion from the board. So moved. moved. It's been moved by board member Vang and I heard uh, someone second it. Oh, and seconded by board member uh, Sing Ellen. All right, any comments from the board? If not, I will ask our clerk to please call the roll. Angelique Ashby. Yes. Bobby Singh Allen. Yes. Don Natoli. Aye. Eric Guetta. Aye. Garrett Gatewood. Yes. Kevin Spees. Aye. Mai Vang. Yes. Patrick Kennedy. Aye. Bill Cerna. Aye. Rick Jennings. Aye. Sean Lolloy. Aye. Sue Frost. Aye. Tim Schaefer. Aye. And Saul Hernandez. Aye. And motion passes with 14 members present. Great, thank you very much, Madam Clerk. That was our big chunk of uh, work today. There's no items on our, uh, for action items today. And um, that puts us over to then reports or questions from the board or do, do any of our board members have questions or reports? Seeing none, then uh, that moves us to item number nine, uh, we're, our adjournment here. So uh, we will be adjourned at uh, three thirty-eight p.m. Our next meeting Mayor, is May twenty. Oh say yes, sorry. yes, Mayor Sing Allen. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, so last night we lost a very dear educator um, for the Elk Grove Unified School District family in the greater Sacramento region and really the state. Irene B. West. She was our first black woman who was our teacher and a beloved principal and just a trailblazer in the school district and beyond. So I would like to adjourn in her memory. Thank you. Uh, thank you, board, Mayor Singh Allen. Uh, board Member Frost. Thank you, Chair Guerra. Sorry, I'm a little late. I just wanted to quickly say thank you to Rivka and Kathy and Jared and all the staff who came out to Orangevale yesterday. And uh, I received a tour at the Orangevale construction site and the library is amazing, absolutely amazing. It feels so huge. Uh, and thanks for all your hard work on it and all the great planning. Great, thank you very much, Supervisor Frost. So yes, we will adjourn today in memory of uh, educator, principal, uh, and teacher, Irene V. West. Uh, with that, we're adjourned at 3.39 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful uh, rest of your day. Again, happy Earth Day to everyone. Thanks for joining in today. I appreciate what you do. Read a book and, uh, and we'll, keep, uh, we'll keep at it here. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Thank you bye. Thank you staff, appreciate all your great work. Have a good one. <laughs>